Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are looking at resultant velocity and the kinematics. We are still on engineering science and four. My name is Seppo. Please subscribe to my channel to make sure you keep on receiving videos like this. Click that notification button so that you'll be notified every time I post a new video. So resultant velocity. Resultant velocity is the sum of all the velocities that are acting on an object. Resultant velocity or resultant uh, in general, it's not a new concept since we did resultant uh, resultant forces in N3. So let's say we are having an object and then two velocities are acting on an object. On this object, which is object A, the first velocity is 2 meters per second. And then let's say this one is 7 meters per second. This block will be moving in that direction at a velocity which is 9 meters per second. So 9 meters per second is the resultant of these two velocities because we can replace these two velocities which is this 2 and 7 meters per second by the velocity which is 9 meters per second and at the end of the day we will still get the same results as when we were applying two velocities so because they are moving in the same direction we will add them but let's say we still have the same block but now we are applying this one 7 meters per second in that direction and then there is another velocity which is acting in that dire in this direction which is 5 meters per second and then and we know that this direction it's a negative direction this direction is also a negative direction this it's a positive and this one it's also a positive so the 5 meters per second because it's going towards west it will take the negative sign and the 7 meters per second because it's going to the east it will take the positive sign and then we add them we will say 7 it's a positive se it's a positive 7 uh, and negative 5 which will give us 2 meters per second meaning that and then it's 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 a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a positive uh, 2 meters per second meaning that we can replace these two velocities by a force by by a velocity which is two meters per second to the east and it will still produce the same result so this we we know it's uh it's revision from n3 let's say we have an object now And then we have these forces. It's 40 kilometers per hour. Forces that are acting to an object. Forces that are acting in an object. Forces that are... Let's say now we have this forces that are that are acting at an angle and then you say it's 15 here that's 10 kilometers per hour and then this is 50 kilometers per hour now first thing that we need to know remember from m3 they told you that whenever a force in this case it's a, a velocity Whenever it is acting at an angle, it will have two components, which will be the horizontal component and the vertical component. So these three velocities, since they are acting on an angle, all three will have a vertical component and a horizontal component. And the way we get the directions of the component is from this point, if the original velocity is going it's pointing away from this point the horizontal component and the vertical component 
will also point away from this point. But if, let's say, the original velocity is pointing towards the point, which is this point, both the horizontal component and the vertical component will be, will be pointing towards this point. So, to solve this kind of a problem, we will say, first, calculate the sum of the vertical, the sum of the horizontal components. And then we will start with this one. We say first it is acting in that direction. And then you can tell from this that it is pointing towards the point, meaning that the horizontal component will be point will be pointing towards the point. Also, the vertical component will be pointing towards this point. And then its velocity, its horizontal its uh, horizontal component will say it's 40 cos 30. We are using the angle that the velocity makes with the horizontal line. And then we move to the next one, which is this one. With this one, we will say at since it is, it will also point in that direction, it will be a, a, a positive as well. A positive 50 cos, and we use this angle, which will be 90 minus 30, since we have this angle, which will be 60. And then we say positive, since this one, at horizontal component, will also be pointing in that direction, which is east. And then we will say 10 cos and we said we are using the angle that the velocity will make with the horizontal line which is this one and then it will be 75 and then all these i got that my horizontal comp the sum of my horizontal component will give me 62.229 kilometers per hour and then we go to the sum of vertical component the sum of vertical component we start with this one it is pointing towards the point our vertical component will also point towards the the point the, the point and we can see now that it is going towards east which means it will be negative negative 40 and then now since we are dealing with um vertical component we will use sine but still we use the angle that the the velocity makes with your horizontal line which will be 30 and then we come to this one it is pointing in that direction which me it is pointing away from this point meaning that our hor our vertical component will also be pointing away this from this point which will be our north direction and it's a positive which will be positive we use this 50 sign since we are dealing with a, a vertical component and then we use the angle that the, the the velocity will make with the horizontal line which is 60 and then we come to this one it is pointing away from the point meaning that also the vertical component will be pointing away from the the from this point and then it is going to the east it is pointing to the east which will be negative negative 10 sine since we are dealing with a with a vertical component sine 75 and then we we'll calculate this i got that my Mm, vertical component is 13.642 kilometers per hour and then from here since we want the resultant velocity we will draw since we we can tell that this is positive and this is positive we know that positive will be in that direction and in the in that direction so we will have a structure which is like this with this being our vertical that is stating 
uh, 0.642 kilometers per hour and this the long line being our 62 it's 62.229 kilometers per hour and then to get our resultant we will complete the par parallelogram and then that will be our resultant so to get our resultant we will use pythagoras theorem r will be the square root of the vertical component which will be 13.642 squared plus okay this is two squared plus our horizontal component which is 62.229 squared which will give us 63.707 kilometers per hour so when we want the direction let's calculate uh, this direction we will use tan theta which say opposite over adjacent and our tan theta will be the inverse of tan our opposite will be this side and this side it's equal to this side we will use 13.672 divided by our adjacent which is 62.229 and then that will give us uh, that will give us what And then it's the inverse of tan uh, 13.642 divided by 62.229. That will give us uh, 12.365 degrees. And then we must write the direction and show between these two which one which angle did we calculate for so because we calculated for this angle we must tell them that it is coming from the east going to the north which will be east 12.365 degrees going to the north so this is the basics of resultant velocity I hope you do remember because we did this in N3 and this will basically be the end of our lesson today. I will be back with another lesson with a more advanced question which is a question suitable for the N4s. My name is Seppo from me to you. We will leave it here today. Ciao.